Welcome to the Out in Westchester podcast. This week we're coming to you from the Yorktown Grill at 347 Downing Drive in Yorktown Heights, New York. Check them out on Facebook and Instagram, Yorktown Grill, and that's grill with an E at the end. They've very been, fancy. Very with fancy. The e at the end. Grill. grill. Yeah. It's French. Grill. grill. Uh, my name is Frank Pellegrino. I'm joined by my incredible co-host, Liz Wadolski. Hi. Hi, everybody. How are you? Doing good. How are you? I'm excellent. Good. Big smile on your face I'm today. I'm so excited to have our guests on for this podcast. We have to. It's going to be the best. The best the, one. No pressure. Jesus. You're setting them up now. No. Oh, no, 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 no. To my immediate left. Uh, I was set up when I got the phone call. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to my immediate left, a hilarious comedian. She's been performing across the country for over 30 years. Thank you so much for joining us, Patty Rosborough. Thank you. Lovely to be here at Thank the you grill. so much. You Thanks. might have seen her on Showtime, and of course she was on uh, Short Attention Span Theater on Comedy Central with Jon Stewart. Mm-hmm. So very excited to have you. Of course. And next to Liz is a gentleman, a guitarist, a writer, a teacher, and we just found out is an actor as well, uh, Mr. No, Mark no, I, I'm, I, I'm acting right now. That's the only acting <laughs> I do. <laughs> Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Sure. Legend. Legendary guitarist. Legend, Legend in my own lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> of course, check him out at markhit.com. That's yeah. hit, H-I-T-T. Mm-hmm. So, I like the way you're spelling everything on this podcast. I, I want to make it easy, you know? Grill, I would have gone grill without the E, so I'd have been confused if I was trying to well, find your grill. Well, that's true. You are correct. That is good. And hit, I would have, I would have just searched H-I-T if I didn't know Well, I'll tell you, my brother was a middle linebacker for the Jets hmm. in the 80s. So we both had to live up to our last names in one way or another. <laughs> so he took the hits and you make the hits. Yeah, what? there you go. Wow. You yeah. make the hits. I yeah, like that. That's it. Right. Your brother that's was it. really a linebacker? Well, not anymore, but he was. Really? Yeah. He, is he big? I mean, oh, he was very, he was bigger than he is now. Really? Yeah. He was, you're a tall fella too. Yeah, he, about was, six he was 6'3", 240. I mean, oh yeah. my wow. God. Did he like that life? Yeah, that's, did a what? Rough, that's a rough <laughs> life. <laughs> right? Mark, how tall are you? 6'2". Six 6'2", two. Six two, okay. Yeah. yeah, he had me by an inch. Yeah, it was close. Oh. <laughs> I'm six feet, and the question I always get asked is, are you actually 5'11", and you up it? Because I guess, I think a lot of women will tend to do that, actually. They'll, they'll up or lower their height just for whatever reason. If it's a taller guy, they'll say they're an inch or two taller. So. Well, gravity is nobody's friend. No. It's true. <laughs> so. I have definitely shortened in the last couple of years. I'm down an inch. Really? Unfortunately, oh. yes. Yeah. So. I didn't ever know. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell, though, can you? Have you ever lied about your height, either of you? Never. No, never. Never my height, my weight. Girls don't lie about their height. Their weight, they the do. The weight you yeah. always lie about. I know that, but I've heard girls lying about their height before. Why would I? What's in it Maybe for like me? bra size and stuff like that, but not the height, no. You know what's funny is I wouldn't know the bra size anyway. You could, you could tell me 36 cc and I have no clue. I'm like, oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> you know, I, I think... I don't, there is Mark, no you know, CC, well, Frank, by the there's, way. There's, yeah. ins, there's inserts for your shoes and there's inserts for a bra. <laughs> That's true. And, uh, you know, you're going to lie about your height. You gotta have your inserts. That's yeah. always the hardest part, the big reveal. When you That's wear a padded bra, which I do, I am a double A. That is how small I am. But I always wear, you know, my power tits when I go out, you know, because... That's what guys like to look at. That's what you... It evens it. you out. It makes your stomach look like it's going this in. Is true. When it doesn't. It gives you curves. It's all about proportion, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the steak, it's the sizzle, okay? Uh, oh, That's how I'll it buy works. that. Yeah. Wow. I know a lot of women that do the butt now. They, they have the thing lifts for their butt. Not just yeah. the surgeries, but like uh, pants that have like cushion to them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I bought the Heidi Klum uh, padded ass pads because... Really? Yeah. And uh, I bought the size large and I couldn't get them up my legs. Wow. That is how teeny... Her shitty panties are. But I thought, you know, I'm going to... Oh, I'm sorry. Am I not allowed to No, curse? you can curse. It's okay. Oh, okay. But, you know, I have a flat ass. You know, I'm a 62-year-old woman. Our asses, you know, they go in. And uh, I thought, you know, I'm going to try ass pads. But I couldn't get it up. 
But you look you, you have a you have a good figure. You look Thank like you. you go in and out. So. I thought you. she was talking to Mark. Thank you. Uh, Thank I, you. No, I I saw, you know, I saw her looking at. Oh, okay. I thought about those ass pads like back in the '80s, years and years and years ago, and I yeah. just I, I just never came up with the uh, you know the concept or whatever it is. Yeah. The prototype. Yeah. And now they're popular, of course. All I, these well, big asses. Asses are so big now. Just in general, like when when I was. In high school, if you had a big ass, you were considered fat. I know. Yep. You know, you know. wanted to yep. have a Barbie ass. And, like, even in Playboy magazine, which I'm sure you fellas know about, they had, like, little, <laughs> little asses with big, giant bazooms, but not big, giant Kardashian yeah. asses. Yeah. No ifs, no ands, just a lot of butt. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's more plastic surgery is all that is. It's all implants. It all is. Guys, of course, we're coming to you from Yorktown Grill. Guess what? (laughs) Every Wednesday, they've got trivia. Every Thursday, they've got a mixed open mic. So if you're a musician or a comedian or a poet, uh, come on in. It's free. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday, they got their football package coming up. So a lot of fun stuff here in Yorktown. They also have a happy hour. Do you know about the happy hour? 4 to 6.30, $5 drafts, 5.50 wines, $7 mixed well drinks. How are you um, reading that upside down so well? And And with my handwriting. (laughs) That is pretty good. Something or other. (laughs) Half price ales? I guess a couple months of doing the show together, you can read my handwriting. I can. That's pretty good. Upside down. Yes, that's that's tough. And um, there's something to be said for that. I'm I'm ambidextrous and all that other stuff. I can do everything with my left and my right. You can? Can you write with your left hand? I can. Not that good, but I can do it. Wow. Yeah, I think with both sides of my brain. Really? Yeah, creative that way. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Friday, September 20th, they've got live music here. They've got Greg Joaquin. Along with a couple others, but he's kind of like the the main performer, and it mm-hmm. seems like it's a bit of a jam type of night. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're trying to do a lot more entertainment here. They've okay. got comedy shows starting every month, I believe, in October as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had a few over the summer. On the twenty seventh, they have karaoke coming up too. Oh, nice karaoke night! And uh, Greg's going to be our guest next week. This Greg that we've That's been correct. talking about. That's Jesus. correct. He's going to be our guest next week. Now, Patty, do you know that? Because you live close to here. You live in Upper Westchester, Lower Putnam area. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. I've never been here. Never been here. No, uh, but it's a cool place. I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm I'm not the most... I, I don't go out a lot. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I'm kind of boring. Um, but, you know, when you don't drink, you don't go to a lot of bars. That's the right. thing. But, right. you know, I'm having tea here, and it's fabulous. So. Yeah. Well, I will tell you. Um, do you drink? Uh, I used to. Yeah, I used to, too. I used to. And then, but, you know, when uh, you know when it takes three days to bounce back, what it used to take one day, uh-huh. you, you make decisions you know, yeah. accordingly. For me, when I, I went to the liquor store and I was five minutes late and it closed, and I'm banging on the door to have them let me in, and then I go to my car and I'm sobbing, crying. I thought, okay, let's... Let's think about this and maybe make a change. You know what I mean? There are meetings available. Yes. (laughs) Go to a meeting. Did did you ever do that with the bank? (laughs) (laughs) Rip Torn did. Rip Torn did a couple years ago and he got arrested. What do you you mean? (laughs) Rip Torn got so drunk, he accidentally broke into a bank (laughs) and fell asleep on the floor. And the cops came. He really thought he was home. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. I never got crazy drunk. I mean, I would. My alcohol thing is that once I stopped drinking, then I would think about it and think about it till the next time I drank. So if it was like nine o'clock in the morning, I think, how long do I have be- before it's five o'clock at night again? You know what I mean? Like where you're, oh. where yeah, no, you're I've never just. Been that bad. But I never like got blackout crazy drunk or anything. Well, at least uh, whatever condition you were in, you were planning ahead. I- <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I had goals. I had goals with my drinking. Speaking of drinking, I am drinking one of their signature drinks. It's the Bobby Pumpkin. That does Ooh. look good. And Yummy. I forget pumpkin what's, beer. what's in it. It sounds so seasonal. Good. What's in this again? Uh, it's a shipyard. Uh, shipyard. Pumpkin ale. Pumpkin ale. Stoli vanilla. Stoli vanilla. Cinnamon sugar ring. Bobby Pumpkin. Bobby Pumpkin. Stoli vanilla. Oh it's really God. good. Yeah, it looks really good. good. And then they put all that cinnamon on top. Yeah. I mean, that's what that. makes it good, the cinnamon. That yeah. I would really love to drink, but you know. So, Mark, you're also local. You grew up in Cortland? Uh, yeah. Peekskill? Uh, right outside Peekskill. You're close to here. Went to Lakeland. Nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. And, um, it was... Uh, it was an interesting place to grow up because when I when I started school, the schools that um, 
that were named after people, I had the people whose names. <laughs> for, instance, for instance, Lincoln Titus is now an elementary school. Mr. Titus was my principal. Really? <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's, what's that's the uh, what's the other one? Did he deserve a school named after him? Uh, uh, um, well, I don't know. <laughs> I was too young to be objective about Titus it. Titus is a really good name, though. I like that name. That's Titus. Yeah. Titus Andronicus, Shakespeare. I mean, you can't get any better than that, right, people? Yeah. Not that I'm so, dropping Shakespeare references. I, I believe you. Anything you say about Shakespeare, Patty, I, I trust you. Okay. Uh, so, so This is great. This is so local for both of you. I'm yeah. glad this worked out so well. Yeah. This is cool. Well, I don't, I don't live local now. I was oh. raised here. Where are you now? Yeah, I, I'm up in the town of LaGrange. Oh, I know the oh, Grange. Yeah, well, we went up, up a ways. It's pretty okay. up there. Oh, it is gorgeous. Oh, I used to live in Statsburg. You know oh, Statsburg? No sure. That's up near there, kind of, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, what's interesting is um, from the first Yorktown exit on the Taconic, yeah. we're like 27 miles away, and the taxes are probably 15 grand to 20 grand more for the same house. Wow. Yeah. Down so, here, you're saying? Uh, yeah, down here. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's nice up there. It's pretty. It is pretty. It's very nice up there. Um, one thing I learned about, and I didn't know, Patty, that you were on Comedy Central with Jon Stewart. That was my first gig. That was your first gig? Yes. How long were and you there? I was there for a year, but I got pregnant. Mm -hmm. So I got pregnant right in three weeks after I got the show. I guess I was pregnant before I got the show, but I found out three weeks later. And, you know, the last thing they want is... A fat bitch on Comedy Central. I was in my So 20s. that alcohol wor actually worked for you. <laughs> All that alcohol exactly. paid off. So I. Well, I got what was your. Before you get into it, what was your role on the show? I don't remember oh, that show. It, it, you know, it's called Short Attention Span Theater. Right. And it was me and John, and we'd throw to clips. It was like. It was. Ha. Huh, the, the, it, it's the beginning of like comedy on TV. Because before that, it was always. Um, you know, uh, m it was mostly live comedy. But mm -hmm. this was like Ha, where they showed comedy 24 hours a day. It was like news networks, but they did it with comedy. So Ha merged with something else, and it became Comedy Central. And then, so I, I we did the show. Remember, Do you remember it? I remember, Liz. I remember not necessarily the news. Yes, which, yes, yes. And that was right around the, what the time that, that you're talking. That yeah. exactly was part of it. There were like three shows. I think it was that one, Short Attention Span Theater. I can't remember the names of the other ones but um but they were like don't tell anyone you're pregnant but of course i blew up like the second I month i looked like a whatever and they're like i'm not don't. pregnant i swallowed a beach ball <laughs> That's i people, just wear this under my shirt people would write in and go rosborough's been hitting the buffet i see because i mean i just my face oh my they God, put me behind terrible. a high table so that you couldn't see but like your boobs get huge my yeah, yeah. shit just your everything yeah it was just so every Everyone knew, and I was trying to keep it under wraps. But you know, and once they knew, uh, they, you can't—they can't fire you when you're pregnant. So I stayed through, uh, took three months off legally, and then they fired me when I came back. Wow! So, oh. That was te right. What an mo! A woman oh. boss. A yeah. woman boss. Wow. Yes. So, so did that woman boss have children? No, Nancy. Oh, Nancy well, that makes Geller sense. does not have children. <laughs> She's, uh, and she still, she works still for, uh, what's his name, Bill Maher. That was one of the shows on the network at the okay. time, so she's still with him, but she was my boss back then. Back when it was Politically Incorrect? Yeah, uh, yeah, it was before Politically Incorrect. It was called something else. Huh. Maybe the one you were talking about, I can't remember. It was, it was... It was his first legally one. correct to fire you, but it was still politically Did incorrect. Did they have a yes. reason to fire you when you came back? No, what happened was I had favored nations with Jon Stewart. So we had the same amount of money. So when I went home and had my baby for three months, and then when I came back, they realized, oh, we can just get this revolving group of comics who come in and they'll do it for free. Uh, so they would get yeah. a different uh, co-host every day or you know they do it for the week and these people just wanted to be on tv so they didn't have to pay them and they're like wow we can cut our expenses by half if we cut her out and also you know with i had gained 25 pounds and I, you know it shows. It shows i was taking it off but on you know i weighed 119 when when they hired me and then i was like one 30, whatever it was. So they were like, done, next. 
wow. you know. But John Stewart was the greatest when I got fired. He was super nice to me, and he actually gave us notice. He gave them one month's notice, and he quit after. Wow. Because he said, uh, I don't want to do it without you, which was very nice. That's nice. Yeah, so he, you know, he backed me, and he was a great guy. It's nice I, that he had the power to take a stand like that, too. He, they loved him, and also it was a, it was number one on the network. Our, our show was number one, so I don't think they thought that John was going to do that. I think that they thought, you know, but he he was a stand-up guy. He and when I got fired, he walked me down. He carried all my junk from my desk, you know, with that embarrassing walk of shame where you have the box with all yeah. your things. It's got to so, be the, the brown box, uh, too. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, you, you could actually take that walk if you won the lottery, and it wouldn't be a shame. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been beautiful. If only. If only. So, um, <clears throat> after that, so you got fired. What was next in your career? Did you do any? Was there any? No, rebound? I stayed home with my... I, I just was like, I was burnt from... that. I was really pissed, you know? And I just thought, I'm just going to stay home with my kid. I, you know... When I went back to work, it was only two weeks. I was away from my daughter, but I had been breastfeeding. And I just, I mean, this is so corny, but I really wanted to be a mom and stay home with my kid. And and then I did, and I was so happy. And then I got divorced. My my first husband's gay. And uh, so we couldn't Wait, work it out. Or oh, no, literally. No, literally gay. And you, did you he know? He has a husband now, and he works for Bette Midler. Like, he's super gay. <laughs> he has a little dog. He's got a little Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. He wears what? little shorts. <laughs> I never knew there was a difference between gay and super gay. <laughs> well, we're learning about it right now. Super wow. gay is when you write musicals and you have a little dog that you carry around. Oh. And when you marry your husband, your dog wears a bow tie. That's super gay. Your oh. dog has a little hat and a bow tie. Oh, okay. Okay, that's super gay. That and then you work from yeah. Bette Midler, you're super gay. <laughs> yeah. And you had no idea why no, you... No, I had an idea. You did? He told me he'd tried it. You know, you think, well, trying it is different than being gay, right? Don't you think a lot of guys have tried it? Or and they call no, that uh, no. some sort of curious? Yeah. Like Try yeah, but, curious. but here's right. the problem. After I realized that once, you know, if you go in it that far, you're in it. You know, I kind of didn't understand that. Because I was coming from the girls' point of view. Like, you know, girls do things with girls. And that I doesn't guess. make them gay. I uh, guess. Make, makes them Maybe a good time. in college. <laughs> but, <laughs> makes them a good time. Makes you know, fun. But you know that doesn't. But with guys, I think it's a little different. I think if you start doing uh, all that it stuff, is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, then then it's different. Yeah. So, was there ever a point where you had to look at him and say, "Are you gay?" Yeah, he said, "I don't like, know." Like, how long were you together? Because you had a kid together. Five years. Five years. He called me up years after, a couple of years after we split up, and he goes, "I have something to tell you." And I go, "What?" And he said, and he's like, ah, "I don't know how I can tell." Ah, ah. He goes, "I'm gay." And I literally said, I hope I can use a curse word. I go, no shit, Sherlock. I mean, of course you're gay. And he goes, yeah, but I didn't know, and I had to be sure. And, and actually, Bette Midler outed him. So he's at a party, and he was writing for her. And they're all talking, and it's a group of people. And she says, oh, you know, too bad there are no cute guys at this party. And Eric goes, well, you know, what about me? And she goes, oh, you don't count, you're gay. And he's like, well... Uh, he said it's like he, it, it was like a spit take with his drink. He didn't think he had never told anyone. He hadn't admitted it to himself. I think it's pretty obvious yes, when so somebody he, is and when they're not. Right. Are we sure Bette Miller didn't brainwash him to become <laughs> gay? No, he was. Trust me, I would know in the bedroom. <laughs> After you walked Thank in on him with a couple of guys <laughs> and kind of clued you in. No, he was. De he's definitely gay. I think he wanted to be bi. He wanted to have kids, you know. Oh. But so, so we had kids. kids he got the kids, and, and now he, he can lived be gay. His full life, right? Yes. That Happens to good. a lot of people, actually. There's a lot of people yeah. like that. Yeah. Wow. Because gay was sort of shamed back in the day, oh. and people really couldn't be who they are. You couldn't like, be gay back in the day. Yeah, it was. I mean, you couldn't come out to your parents. You couldn't come out to anybody. And he probably his mother kept said it when she to told me, she, she said, "You've just ruined my life." There, see, there you go. That's why he <laughs> couldn't. Like, he couldn't. Wow. And she kept trying to get me to go back with him. She goes, "I think it's a phase. Please go back." A phase. Oh, That's what she said. <laughs> You know, she's old school Italian. You can have your son be gay. Was well, that before or after you were in the off Broadway play, Gay Dracula? <laughs> He's going then through then a phase. you started Gay Dracula and said, screw him. That was before I met him. If you have a gender preference at that age, it's not a phase. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
He went through a phase, and he went through Robert. He went through Nicholas. He went through Charlie. <laughs> he actually did go they're through. All phases. He yeah, they're all phases. <laughs> he went through Andrew. Andrew was his boyfriend before, which I thought it was like more experimental. But then I found it. He was with Andrew for two years. That's different. It's a long phase. That's is, that's yeah. That's a long, that's a long <laughs> experiment. Exactly. That is. <laughs> So to switch gears a little bit. <laughs> yes, sorry. Oh, Mark. wait. Oh, I had one more question for sure, her, if I can. Ahead. I promise. Go we'll, ahead. Uh, go so go you're ahead. off for six years from comedy, and you went back to it. I had to go. I, I had no money. It went, and once I we separated, it's like, well, what am I going to do for a living now? And then, and it's horrible when you have kids, because you can't get a babysitter to come to the house from 11 to 4 in the morning. You know what I mean? Like when you're doing com- mm-hmm. So it was just very hard. And then I did radio, and then, you know, I did all sorts of different stuff. Jacob's I know. Ladder. When Jacob Slatter, I did that right after I married my gay husband. Oh, okay. That we actually didn't go on a honeymoon because we were filming, filming. I was filming that. That was one reason. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that, oh my God! Wait, whoa! When we did go on the honeymoon, I just have to tell you this. Uh, it was in a tra- he he made all the arrangements. It was in a trailer in Fort Lauderdale on spring break, and we had bunk beds. And I said, Oh my goodness! I said, I am not sleeping like this and he goes I don't think it's so bad did he at least have the top bump bump (laughs) (laughs) yes unfortunately I was the bottom but (laughs) Uh, I I I know several comics who took uh, five years ten years off and they said that when they came back it was a different world completely and they didn't know anybody. And they went to clubs and like, oh, I know the booker, I know the manager, and they're like, yeah, they're not here anymore. Right. You have to audition again. I went back and I was working at Stand Up New York, uh, the the Comedy Cellar. I was working at uh, Dangerfield Comic Strip. I was working at every club in New York City. When I came back, I couldn't get on anywhere, and I was told at Stand Up New York, which is now called what's it called? Is it still called Stand Up New, Stand Up New York? York? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're too old. So, wow. and that was five well, years. You should have said, but things are just as funny. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The guy told me, he goes, you were so funny tonight. I go, oh, that's terrific, because I was on some bringer show or something. I go, well, maybe you could use me on t-. He goes, I'd love to, but you're just too old for my crowd. I'm like, ooh. Wow. So in, anyway, in other words, they tell uh, you to your face. Wow. Your being older would keep them from laughing. That's right. Wow. Even though he just saw me have a great set. It's a bunch of crap. It's bad. It's, it's very yeah. ageist and sexist ageist. Yes. I'm not to be a complaining bitch, but... Guys can be old in comedy, nobody cares. You know, Louis C.K. can be a fat, old, balding guy, and nobody gives a shit. But they gave a shit about other things. Uh, <laughs> not even that much. They're all bringing them back everywhere. But, you know, with women, I think it's, uh, they want you young and cute, you know. 100%. Yep. Well, did you find... Yes. And this is my question. Okay. <laughs> did you find that things that were funny back in the day weren't considered funny anymore? Um, I mean, Mel Brooks has run into that. <laughs> uh, you know what it is? I think when I came back, I did have to come in with a different act. Because, well, first of all, all my jokes were about being single and being, in, you know, engaged and being that. Now I'm coming back. I have two kids. I'm a mom. You know, so uh, I, I had to start over. Yeah. Sure, you know, and so so I don't know if the, I think that there's been like more of a move with with the new comics now with more storytelling than than joking, yeah. but um, but I, but there are still people who do set up punchline. I don't think that will ever go out of style. Oh, no, Mitch, can't. Mitch Hedberg before yeah. poor guy overdosed, but that guy was one of the funniest set up punchline guys ever. I don't know if you know Mitch Hedberg, oh, hysterical yeah. and. Set up, punch, tag, tag. Funniest stuff you ever see. So I, I think it still works. Rodney Dangerfield, I can look up old Rodney Dangerfield on The Tonight Show. I oh, laugh hilarious. hard out loud I know, my by myself, mm-hmm. in my car, whatever. Like, I still love old time. I just worked with, I don't know if you know this guy. Um, I'm sorry, and then I'll shut up and we're going to oh, talk to you. No. Uh, I just worked with Uncle Floyd, who used to have a TV yeah. show yes. back in the either 70s or 80s. I, he opened the show, which was a mistake. He did uh, half an hour up front. He got a standing ovation. I had to go on after him. That you never want. That guy, and it's all old school jokes, a ukulele, songs with goofy. Like people still love that stuff. You know, here, here's a little side note on that. His brother, who Uncle Floyd, Jimmy Vivino, is a 
tremendous guitar player. He is? Oh, that's so and, cool. And well known. Really? Isn't he on a late night show? Um, he, 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 I believe that. And he also is in uh, the Fab Faux, F A U X. You know, who does oh, the really? Beatles show? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. No, he does all sorts of things. But he's great. Yeah. And he's Floyd's brother. Oh, my God. And Floyd, is, he told me he has some jokes that he's been doing for 53 years. He goes, you know, if they work, I'm not throwing yeah, them out. Right. <laughs> If it ain't broke, don't right, fix yeah, it. Exactly. But I, I love all of it. I love all kind of comedy. I like storytelling comedy. I like um, just I like old school stuff. I like I like it all. I like impressions. I, anything. It's as if it's funny. Sure. I'm all in. You know. Sure. And of course, you can check out Patty Rossboro. Find her on Facebook and Instagram at Patty Rossboro. It's actually going to be at Caroline's on Broadway on September 24th, and then Dangerfields in the city also on October 3rd and October 5th. So. Fabulous. Fabulous. Come on down. Yes. <laughs> so, Mark. Yes. You are one of the most accomplished musicians in Westchester. Well, I have to say. Uh, thank you. And and you've played with some really big names, and we're yeah. so honored to have you on the show today. Oh, thank you for having me. So it's you, good to be had. Do you want? How did, how did you get into music? Were your parents into music? Well, uh, no, they weren't. Well, they weren't. Um, it was a bit of an anomaly. Okay. When I think back, uh, I had uh, I had uh, a natural a natural affinity for music, and I started playing the violin at the age of seven. Wow! And then I went off and got into the marimba when I was like nine. Marimba. So I was uh, actually playing, you know, with two mallets in each hand, playing, you know, also Carnival of Venice, all sorts of crazy things, and then. I saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, and I said, Mark, the girls aren't screaming for marimba players. <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, and I actually, you know, started playing guitar just to dabble with it, and then I just became ensconced. I just, I started, this is something people don't have to do anymore, but I, you know, I, you, you wear records out, putting the needle at the oh, front, yeah. and just, getting over and over and over the redundancy in the hours wow. that, that I put in. Yeah, it was just crazy when did I think about it. Did you take classes or did you did this yourself? I, I never took a lesson in that my life. That is so interesting to me. Incredible. How do you teach so I yourself have a ra I have rather like have a, an, you have a an ob I have a very good ear. Yeah. But, but I have an, an obtuse style to go along with it. So. Yeah. Wow. But you like that. How do you, do you teach music? Uh, yes. So. Do you teach them your how you learned? Or well, you teach I teach them numerically. If you teach numerically, that means that every key is the same because the numbers correspond, they mm. correlate. I'm t I, I tried doing piano, and I, I just I think you have to be. It is kind of math in your head, isn't it? Oh, or, it's it's all math. I, that's why I stu I stink it's at music. It's all math, yeah. but but. It, you can't. It isn't 100% math. Okay. You have to. You have to intermingle have it feel. with melody. Yeah. Oh. Okay. In other words, you you approach it mathematically and then right. you resolve musically. Otherwise, this doesn't like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so you practiced in your by yourself. Like you didn't have parents. You know, like how kids. You didn't you know, have parents. You didn't have, I mean, you didn't have parents telling you you have to practice. You have to practice. Oh, you I, I had. To. <laughs> I had a parent that that put my guitar in the crawl space to keep me from playing it yeah. because I didn't get good enough grades that quarter. Oh. Yeah, and so I went down and practiced with the rats. What did they with want a flashlight. you to be? <laughs> what, did they, <laughs> what did they want you to be? Um, I don't know because I okay. didn't listen. You know, is that selective yeah. memory? Yeah, of course. of course. And it was like a big rebellion time back then, No, right? I knew I was going to be a, a professional guitar you know player okay. when I was 13 years old. I was about wow. to ask you that. How old were you when you That's say awesome. Well, I, I started playing guitar. I got a guitar for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I was 10. Wow. Um, I think maybe I had just turned, what was it, 10... The Beatles played in 64, I got, that was February, I got my guitar two months before that. Wow. wow. And, um, yeah, I just, uh, this is very funny. My grandmother, God rest her soul, she bought, and if you remember the, the, uh, the comic books back then, had something, had all the little ads in the back. Yeah. You, you could know, buy so, monkeys. So this was oh. Spider Ed, monkeys. Ed Sale. Learn guitar in seven days or your money back. No so way. my grandmother buys this. And I get this as a kid. I can't make heads or tails out of this thing. So my mother 
God rest her soul, sits me down and explains how to correspond the oh, chord wow. charts to the neck of the guitar. So for, actually wow. for a good week, I would have to say my mother was a better guitar player than me. Wow. <laughs> she was showing me how to play the chords for a week. She was showing me how to read the chord charts. That's great. Then I took it off. So she encouraged it once oh, she saw yeah. your, your, your love oh, for well, it. Well, I was one of those kids, you know, that would get out at the age of two years old and, and just sing in front of them at, like, you know, what? family gatherings. Yeah. And, and I had no fear. Wow. Yeah. So. How old were you when you were able to make a living off of music? Because you, oh, you started um, at 10, I, 13. I still have a problem doing that. But really? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, no, That's no. In all baby. seriousness, in all seriousness, things are pretty good now. Yeah. However, a career in the music business yeah. is, tough. is if if you if you related it to a roller coaster, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, Six Flags would never build it because nobody would insure it. <laughs> it has the highest highs and yes. the lowest lows. Yes. And it's just it's crazy. You know, you just have to persevere. You can't set out to do it. For monetary gain. You do it for, you the do love. It for love yeah. and pray for monetary gain. That's got to be the same. It's the same with comedy. I absolutely yeah. agree. But you know, the thing is, you know, like people, um, I, I never really made a lot of money at this. There, there was a period that when I did John Stewart, I made money. When I had the morning radio, I made money. And there were a couple of years where I made some decent money. But I've, I always have another job with my job because with comedy because I, I just love comedy. I just yeah. love it. But I could never figure out how to really make a living. I know there are people who make a living at it, but I also hated going on the road, which was like, you know, if I want to go on a boat, you know, I can yeah. make some good money on a boat. I don't want to go on a boat. That's the problem. Yeah, going but you know, you, that it, you probably could have back in the day, but it would have had to be a really big boat and you would have been on stage six <laughs> times a week. Yeah. <laughs> there's just certain things I won't do. So, like, do you travel a lot? Um, on occasion. Yeah. But but you see, the, if you're 20 and you're 30, you can get in, a, in an RV right. and you can go around the country. Right. Now we do something called fly dates. What's that? Where, where you'll set up, um, let's say you have a five, 600 mile radius. You set up a bunch of dates within that radius. You fly out, mm -hmm. you get a bus. Okay. You go back and forth between right. those dates and then you fly back. Okay. And it's a lot more cost justified. And you sleep in a hotel, you're oh, not yeah. on a, yeah, yeah. Right. But it's a short tour and then you can rest. Right. So you're right. not killing yourself. Right, that's what fly dates are. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, we're gonna have to take a quick break. Again, we're coming to you from Yorktown Grill, 347 Downing Drive in Yorktown Heights. Visit them on Facebook and Instagram, Yorktown Grill, with an E at the end. Um, <laughs> we'll be right back, we're gonna try out some food. <laughs> uh, we are back at Yorktown Grill, 347 Downing Drive in Yorktown Heights, New York. Every Wednesday, trivia. They've also got buy one, get one free burgers going on on Wednesdays. Tuesday, they got Taco Bell, Taco Bowl <laughs> specials. Thursday's mixed open mic. Also, it's steak night. And Sundays, they got their football <laughs> program starting up. Happy hour, Monday through Friday, 4 to 6 30. $5 drafts, 7550 wine. Half price appetizers. And Friday, September 20th. Greg Joaquim is playing here. We are joined by Patty Rossborough. Check her out at Caroline's on September 24th. Dangerfield's October 3rd and October 5th. And Mark Hitt, October 4th. Check him out at The Chance in Poughkeepsie. And now we are joined by the owner of Yorktown Grill, Matt Crossett, who's actually also a performer, singer, and guitarist. Really? It's going to be yep. the first season in Yorktown October 3rd. Yep. And the Up Lounge in Nyack on November 1st. Yeah, I play. Matt, thank you so cool. much for joining us. Hey, Mike. it's my pleasure to have you guys here. Thank you so much. Sure. We just got to sample all the food. Yes. It's good. Nobody looks sick, so we're no. doing good. No, really good. The all food's right. really, really good. Let me awesome. tell you, and I'm a pain in the ass to feed because I am gluten-free <laughs> and dairy-free and everything yeah. ever has to be. And I had the best that comes out. It was killer. And the avocados, no brown in the avocado. No, I'm never. Like, I'm a real asshole about that. Yeah. I, it, everything was like really Can you good. feel a pee under your mattress? <laughs> there I you can. Go. <laughs> I can. Everything bothers me, but I'm telling you, it was so good. Oh, it's good I to mean, hear. I'm, Thank seriously. you. Seriously. The shrimp tacos, fantastic. Shrimp one right. of my favorites. The one of my favorites. was just <laughs> There you go. Mama bear's porridge, right? Onion rings and 
I love the fries. They yeah. fries were waffle, good. Waffle fries, but long. They yeah. were delicious. A little bit, a little bit of everything yeah. for you guys. And yep. the wings. The wings are a staple. One of our staples. Incredible wings. Yes, thank you. Uh, and when I was eating them, it made me remember uh, Michael's Tavern yes. in Pleasantville, which, for those that don't know, uh, Matt is part of a family that owned and operated restaurants around Westchester County for years. Really? Yeah, for a Michael's long since one of them, Michael's right? the mainstay from 1979 until it closed recently. But I was so disappointed when yeah, it closed. Yeah, so were we all, but it yeah. kind of just had to happen with the economic downturn and everything that kind of comes with that. And also, uh, just my father getting a little older and a little less wanting to do the restaurant, which if you know anything about the restaurant business, it's not exactly the most relaxing business to be in. It's seven no, it's days a week, right? It's a little, it's kind of all the time. I, I'm lucky to be in the business in a time where I have a cell phone and I do trust a lot of the people that I work with. So if, any, if at any time anybody needs me, I'm just a quick call away security so cameras help exactly always spying always yeah. the big brother right yeah. <laughs> but um That's why you like but yeah me and my brother we opened up here about four years ago it'll be four years in october um and yorktown has kind of really accepted us and brought us in and and uh they're really happy that we came in and, and tried to do something really good for the town a nice family place uh nice place to come out watch a game watch some music uh, and all that jazz. So lots of TVs in here. Lots right? of TVs. I think yep. It's great. You've done a wonderful job. Ah, thank My you very much. Thank you. My question is, why the E? Grill with an E. <laughs> why? Is it French? Is it make it fancier? If you know anything English? about Yorktown, you know it's not French at all. So it's not that. <laughs> um, I don't it's remember grill, why. Yorktown grill with an it's, E. It's like ye old. With exactly. An e. yeah. you know? We ye want people to come e in and be comfortable. E. Now, one thing and I ease say, make people comfortable. That's what I read one day. Thank you. I did. I, you I, read that? In no, a book. In a book. You did? The in a book. Ease make people with pages and words and everything. Really? Yeah. Really? I, I did. With Books are amazing. They are. Yeah. <laughs> information in those. Yeah. I should read one sometime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing I don't want people to misunderstand is because this was Finnegan's before that. It was very much just a bar. Yorktown Grill is absolutely an American family restaurant. We tried to, yes. It really is. The food, the menu, everything about this, it's a restaurant. It's not just a bar. You know what I mean? Like, And, and for years, you know, it was Finnegan's. I forget what it was before that. But it felt more like a bar. This is a, this is a fantastic restaurant. The food, honestly, this is some of the best we've had so far. Best taco, shrimp taco. Yeah. Wings, my favorite wings. And we've been to what, 15 places, 16 places? Oh, wow. We always get wings. We yeah. always get wings. This is, this is good, man. No, I'm glad, man. You're doing a great job. Yeah, when, we, when we came in, we, they used to have like the big booths on the other side. Mm -hmm. And um, we didn't like them because from a business standpoint, that, that booth can fit eight people. But if two people sit in there, I'm losing six oh, seats. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So it's not very flexible. So we knocked those down and, and tried to make like a big uh, barrier, a decent barrier in the middle. So it's still big, one big room, but it gives a little bit of parity. And it allows the barroom to be the barroom and the dining room to be a nice place where you can bring your kids. And we have a big uh, like kids, kids menu that's not too expensive because, you know, I have, I have a two and a half year old. So I know that you go out to a restaurant, you'll order them food and they won't even eat any right. of it. Yeah. You know, so Chicken fingers. exactly. They can't eat a full lunch. Right? No. So we have <laughs> smaller plates for the kids to make sure that they um, <laughs> So that they, they can get stuff that they'll like. All, all of our servers know as well. Like, for instance, I love when a server comes up and they say, oh, well, do you want me to put the kids' food in right away? So you can kind of get them out of the way. And then they're nice and full and calm so I can eat right. my dinner normally. Yeah. So we really try to cater to that family, uh, family uh, atmosphere because that's what Yorktown is. Yorktown is a lot of blue-collar, normal family people. They come for the wonderful, like, Yorktown School District is a really good school district. So it's a lot of just normal people, they, and they come out, they like their sports, they like their beer, and we, we try to provide that. Right. Well, I'll bring my husband. I love yeah. this place. There yeah. we go. I really do. Oh, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the avocado got an A+. Plus. Oh, my avocado, God. with a capital oh A there, God. I guess. I heard that there was an avocado shortage. There was. Not here. Oh, not anymore. No, no, no. I mean, we, we just kind of so powered fresh. through. You could charge extra for it or anything? <laughs> no, you know, we probably should have. There's a probably a lot of us. business things we should do, but we try to cater to our customer and make sure that uh, they know what they're going to get and they come in, they know what they're going to pay, so it's not going to kill them. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I re do remember when that avocado shortage was, and we made a little bit less on our the Cobb salad, which you had, and yeah, yeah. the shrimp taco. We made a little bit less, but, you know, it goes a long way in um, curing to 
the, the locals and making sure everybody's happy and making sure people come in and they know what they're going to get and they're going to have a good time. So I only know about that avocado shortage is because I went to a Mexican restaurant mm-hmm. and we wanted guacamole and they said, sorry, there's an avocado shortage. <laughs> we don't have any guacamole. Yeah. I said, you got to be kidding me. No. We got <laughs> a Mexican restaurant. Yeah. That's we got like an avocado staple. guy. He always takes, he, we got a guy for that. You got a you connection. have an avocado guy? I mean, it's, it's, it's the so bar business. We got, I got a guy for everything. <laughs> I got somebody. So. You know what? I have a guy for everything too. And that's what makes life <laughs> yeah, Liz I don't yeah. have that type of guy, but I mean, I could probably call somebody no, up for you. Guy, <laughs> give me his number later because I need one. I'll check it out for you. Don't you worry. See, the thing about avocados Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. is that you know if there's a shortage, it's real. Yeah. Because you can't hold avocados back just to drive the price up. Yeah. No. Right. Yeah, the, no, because they, like they you can with oil. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they spoil very quickly. They do. They do. I eat avocados literally every day. Yeah. I, I have, a, so good I have a half an avocado every it's morning. It's the good I fat, crazy. right? Yes. Yeah. I am a co- Avocado toast? I don't. What is that? You just spread it on. It's a just yeah. It's just toast with avocado on it. I'm, well, I can eat gluten free toast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Avocado toast. Quite the same. Very Westchester thing. It's some very people, California. Some people eat yeah. half of it and put the other half on their face. Yeah. Hey, to really? eat your own, right? Am I've I right? I've done that. I've done that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What does it like do I to said, your face? Some people. Yeah. Maybe it does something for the skin. Yeah, no. It's Exfoliation. Like really? Yeah, no. Exfoliate. For real? Oh, I guess so. Why not? <laughs> I thought that was cucumbers, but I guess I guess I'm that's really different. Look at your eyes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking pretty good for 85. Right? Well done. Right. Avocados well done. work. All avocados. <laughs> Who knew? Matt, I gotta ask you. Since you came up in the restaurant industry and for, you grew up in it, I did. Is there any advice that your father gives to you? that he still tells you to this day that you always have to keep in the back of your mind when you're running uh, this place? I mean, to be honest, the big thing in restaurants, just make sure they leave happy, you know, because it's inevitable, especially on like a busy Friday or Saturday night, you have a couple hundred people, hopefully more coming through here. You're going to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. You're going to mess up somebody's burger. You're going to mess up somebody's drink. But what, what you have to remember is that this is the service business and the service industry, and you got to make sure people are leaving happy. And and to be honest, that mistake is actually probably going to make a regular customer more than anybody else because that gives you an opportunity or it gives your server or your bartender an opportunity to, to, show, to show you care. You know, a lot of places, if they make a mistake, you know, like they'll be like, ah, oh, whatever. You know, you still have to pay for the whole thing. If somebody doesn't like your food, well, then give me your food. Let me get you something you like. And right. especially I got really good guys in the kitchen. They make they pump food out of the kitchen like whatever people really want as you said we kind of cater to whatever you need if you're gluten free if you have an allergy or you have anything like that all you got to do is just let our servers know and you're never going to get a weird look or this Rolling and that of the eyes i get at yeah. certain so places patient i go with her and i know she you was, were really nice that's the business i'm in stuff, all the things she couldn't eat i'm like uh uh-uh, <laughs> yeah. i'm walking away I'm that's right what the way station is for Right. Then you go back there and you go, man, but, <laughs> you know, but no, that's the, that's, that's the business we're in. My daughter so anybody would hate that when we'd go to that. a restaurant together and she'd go, don't say anything. I go, well, I have to tell them what I can't eat. And I'd be telling them. And literally the waitress would roll her eyes at me. And, and my daughter would go, she just rolled her eyes at you. And I go, I know, that's what they do a yeah, lot of but, times. It's, I mean, anybody that does that, then they probably shouldn't be in this business. Yeah. Did you ever think you, know? you might fare better if you told them what you can eat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it's a good place to start. It. It's she a good did. place to start. Yeah. Well, apparently she can eat avocados. So it's a very good place to start. And chicken and well, yes. bacon and gluten lettuce. free chicken. Yeah. All, that. All that I can eat. Yeah. No, we ate at a restaurant recently where they the the food came. There were five of us, and the food two people's food came out after the three of us were done, and then they brought out the food, and it was the wrong order to yeah. the other two people, and then. They charged us for the wrong food. Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes service, I think, is half of the meal, really. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you could eat all this food at home. Yeah. You come out for the atmosphere and right. to be served. Like, yeah. that's why. So, that's our job. Nobody to make wants sure to do dishes. That's nobody why does. They come yeah, out. I got, they come out because nobody I got a guy for the dishes. dishes. <laughs> you don't got to worry about it. I got a guy. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that's what it is. So, you, we come yeah. out, we're here to please. You know, like, so if there's right. something you want, then you service. just let us know. It's what? With any service, like comedy or music, you want people to leave happy, fulfilled, like they really enjoyed your show, like they enjoyed your restaurant, yeah. they enjoyed your show. Right. It's all the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's a, a pack, give and take. It's a package any, experience. Any business, yeah. you want everybody to leave like, oh my God, that was a great experience. Yeah. I'm going back to and see it, you. And another thing my father always told me too is you got to give them a reason to come. 
And that's why we do the open mics like every Thursday one. night, which I know you're <laughs> not a that local. Kind. I would love for you to come by and play with well, us. I'm semi local. I'd have to make a trip down to Either Chicago. way, but, either way. We, we have full back line for our musicians. It's not just a bunch of guys with acoustic guitars playing. You do have music here occasionally. We have music here, not all the time. Because of all these TVs, we have a very fervent uh, sports crowd that comes in, wow. and that doesn't always mix that much. So what we're doing right now, every Thursday night, we do the open mic out front. We always have a, a drum kit, a bass player, a guitar player, and a, a, an extra amp or two so that you can come in. Uh, you always, you can either play alone if you like. Who we runs have, that? What? Uh, me, I run it, and then um, the drummer in my band, actually, Mike Cesario, um, he's in a couple other bands, too. He's like the main MC. So you do the screening. Uh, I mean, it's open mic, so there's no screening. Everybody it's just, signs up. Yeah, yeah you just kind of sign up, and now we have like a solid group of uh, at least like 10 to 20 people that come every single week and they're great musicians they're great artists that's kind of that? how Is I'm on a Thursday that's good. every Thursday night it starts uh, sign ups are at 8:30, okay. and um, and yeah it starts at around 9 9 30 uh, depending on the crowd and depending on that but yeah so like it's the type of thing where if you're a musician and you don't have anybody to play with and you wrote a song just write the chords on a piece of sheet on a a piece of sheet, a sheet of paper, <laughs> and my, like the guys that I play with are absolutely I, I know, good enough. I, I it's know. such a piece fun of time. Sheet is a good way. A piece of sheet, <laughs> a piece of sheet of paper. But then also we do the comedy nights as well. Every once in a while. What's your again. comedy nights? Uh, we do them uh, sporadically. I do them actually with a friend of mine, uh, Lisa Sobin, out of the city. You've never heard of her, um, but she does amateur comedy down there. And she's a big fan, and she helps me run the show. So basically, she gets all the. Uh, New York, Brooklyn, Manhattan comics that work regularly, and we we don't do it on the weekends because it's kind of too pricey, but we do them usually on off nights so we can get people to come up that maybe wouldn't have otherwise, right? Um, that wouldn't cost us so much because it's a, it's not a huge place, it's not exactly a comedy club at right. all. Yeah. So and what I was talking about with Frank before is that for comedy you need everybody locked in and watching comedy. You right. can't have, even if you have two people on the end of the bar talking, the that's whole right. room is ruined. It, that's right. So it's like we, a virus, it really is, because then the people next to them are yeah. paying more attention to what they're talking about. Or they're and, bothered, and all they hear is yeah. them, even though, and like, yeah. and with Mike, uh, the guy who I do the open mic with, uh, we we have like- Do you call the, him open mic? Uh, you know, if he's uh, had a couple drinks in him maybe, but otherwise, <laughs> I don't know. But um, no, we run those comedy nights, and Lisa gets all the people they come up. So we kind of do it when it works for both of us. Right. And so that's when, if you uh, follow us on Instagram at uh, Yorktown Grill with an E on the end, because we're classy, and uh, Facebook.com uh, Yorktown at Yorktown Grill, um, you can you can definitely see whenever we're doing that. We always have at least a couple weeks of promotion that we try to get the word out um, to do that. But um, you said you do it out front. What do you mean out front, your, your music? You so mean? basically, out front of the restaurant here, we have a little patio. There's a little TV that... Oh, you do music out there? Yeah. Basically, we don't have any neighbors here. Oh, you're uh, this allowed Kmart, to play out front there? Wow. Nobody's ever given us a problem. I hope this doesn't uh, screw it up for us, to be honest. But no, we Even just did that. song is a piece of sheet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but we just had, I think, uh, apparently you were talking about it with Alex Kano. We just had our big, like, uh, first oh, annual yeah. Grillapalooza. Uh, which was yes, exactly. all local music, local musicians wow. from around here. Right. We had five acoustic Dan's acts Lotnick play out front. Dan Zlatnik, yeah. Alex Kano played. Alex Kano um, was here on our show. And yeah, and my band actually finished the night, and it was it was amazing. It, we actually got locals to come out and pay a cover so that I could pay the bands like right. fairly enough. And they they yeah, actually no, no, supported local it. music, which as you that, know, playing major. around here, that's it's unreal. My, yeah. Me and my band, we were sitting there and just playing, and just like at the end of the show, I sat down with Mike, who I ran the whole show with, and we were just like, "What the hell just happened? Hmm. Yeah. Where did these people come? From? Who are they? I couldn't believe it. Because we'll do a night here, and it's just it'll be are you barbecuing out there. Uh, no, we did have an outside bar Rilla, though. We had uh, we had like uh, sp uh, spike seltzers on tap out there. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the white claw thing. We didn't get white claws because okay. the other company was a little quicker on the uptake there. But we had spike seltzer on tap, and we have it actually on tap now. What's you it can spiked get spiked with. Uh, it's basically I think the alcohol comes from corn somehow. It's America. Everything comes from corn, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we had that bar out front, and we had the acoustic acts were amazing. Mary Hood, who's playing next Friday with Je Greg Joaquin, um, Lilla Muir, who if you haven't heard her, she is amazing. L I L L I M U R E. Um, she played, and then we had Mark McIntyre, Syndicate play. Who he's a local guy. He's from Yorktown. He's a phenomenal guitar player. Yeah, a bunch um, of my friends came to it. Yeah, it was. As I said, I could not believe the out. 
like the the people that came out and everybody was so into it it wasn't just like oh let's just happen to, oh no it's people came for it and danced their faces off and it was, the next time it was something you're gonna have to invite mark hit you know why i will have to he's a yeah. hit maker well he's about to come over to the open mic and he's about to have it's a great time amazing. so it's gonna be a lot <laughs> Actually, of fun if you had him at open mic he would destroy this place i'm telling you you're gonna be pleasantly surprised <laughs> with the level the level of musician, <laughs> musicianship of that that it comes through. Well, thank you for the invite. Oh, it'd be a great time, man. So now you got to put Mark Hitt on a show, and you got to put Patty Rossborough on the next comedy night. I'm in. Exactly. I think that sounds like a plan. Absolutely. Patty, does your daughter do stand up? My daughter, Molly Kornfeld, been doing Molly it four Kornfeld. years. She's hilarious. I have not seen her. Oh, she's really funny. Yeah. She's been, she works in Long Island. She's doing all the governors and all those rooms and stuff. She's like moving on up. What's that like for you as a mother? And your your daughter's doing the same kind of thing. Great. Yeah? I want her to make it and pay for my old folks home <laughs> since I never really the dream made of every money. parent. I just want her to take care of me so I don't have to live in a cardboard box. I I just hope she. I tell her I go look. She's 27. I go because she has a real job and her father, my ex-husband, is like. D you super know, gay. don't yeah, super super gay. Gay. He goes, <laughs> don't give up your day job because she's going up for auditions yeah, no, and she got callbacks. And Never. he goes, don't give up the day job. And of course, I'm like, look, you're only cute in 27 once. Give up the day job. Go for it. You got another 10 years before they don't want anything to do with you. I know what happens when you hit 40. They don't want you. Like yeah. I, I yeah. feel like. Get rid of that job. Let's, yeah. you know, I don't care what you have to do, but go on these auditions and like, I really, I'm like everything against what her father says. So, you know. In other words, you're supportive. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Is there ever like uh, conversations where you're trying to give her advice and does she know better? Oh, well, when she first started and she told me she was going to do comedy, I'm like, what are you talking about? She'd never been to one of my shows or she, she'd wow. never, I, I don't think she ever watched a comedy special or whatever. And I go, what do you mean you're going to do comedy? And I go, why don't you throw your jokes by me and I'll tell you what I think. She goes, no, mom, I'm doing this on my own. And I'm like, oh my God. So, wow. but she was funny the first time up. So she's, uh, she's good at math. Like, you know, when you were talking about music as math. Yeah. I also believe comedy, puzzle. when you a set up and a punchline, a Good lot timing. of times is math and, and, and it's a puzzle that you have to put together. But anyway, she's really good at writing. And she's yeah. a great performer, cute girl. But yes, it, thanks for that plug. Did you, <laughs> did, did you say that Sam Kendelson actually wanted to take music lessons with you? Guitar Sam Kennison. Kennison wanted to yes, take music lessons with you? He wanted to take what guitar is, lessons. Did you, did you give him the Was he just uh, screaming at you the whole time? You. Actually, I met him through um, a fellow guitar player who, okay. who actually is a tremendous jazz player. His name is Barry Fennerty. Okay. And um, he was uh, living on 30th Street mm -hmm. in the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is before Sam hit big, and he invited me over, and I said, hi. He said, yeah, I'm Sam Kennison. I said, hi, Sam. And, um, you know, we hung out. For wee hours, telling yeah. stories, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. jokes, and, right. you know, and so the like. So you also played with uh, John Cetriani, right? That was like Joe Cetriani. Joe Cetriani was your other guy wow. that you played with. Yeah, a lot? Well, I've, I I know Joe because we rubbed elbows for years because he's from Long Island. Okay. Before and you spent some time out in Long Island once you moved out. Uh, Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I spent a lot of time out there. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. we got we got a house in the Hamptons. Oh, okay. Uh, for five years running. We nice. were uh, we were pretty crazy. Oh, you were crazy. <laughs> Tell us about Back the, in the women. 70s. Yeah. What? Yeah. What about yeah. that? It was yeah. yeah. Were there a lot of girls? Okay, mid to late seventies. The and groupies. What about the group? Were there groupies? Did you have a lot of groupies? Were women um, lining up out your door? Well. <laughs> No? What, let's put it, it this like way. Yes. Let's put it yeah, this yeah. way. Sounds like a yes. In the last block, I, said, I, I didn't have, I didn't have a punchline like come here often. <laughs> I didn't have that. <laughs> right. The women always had the line. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you were the so, so, yeah, yeah. I yeah. was. You know, it, most men usually pursue. Oh, and but it's, you it's were different being pursued. Yeah, well, it's just you know because Too you're impressive. you're. you're you're in a prominent band, right. this, that, and the other thing. You're living in these clubs. Right. So your whole life, eight nights a week, is in these places. So and the girls can't, you never had to come up with a line? You never had to say, hey, uh, blah, blah, because they that's were right there? That's the whole there. point of being in a band, I right? guess that is the whole point. Yes, so what was the best line that was delivered was that to you? Was that Bryce Pryor that you were The best line, huh? 
what what got your attention the most from a woman? Like what what could she do while you're at the bar or at the club that would get your attention? Ignore me. Really? <laughs> really? Well, if 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 she was pretty, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you wanted a uh, uh, if if she wasn't, I'd be thankful. Uh, <laughs> you wanted a challenge. Yeah. A challenge to, uh, right? Well, of course. What, what was the most <laughs> aggressive thing a groupie ever said or did to oh. get your attention? I can imagine. Uh, it. I, I'm uh, trying to. I want to. I want to. <laughs> I want to fill in the blanks. Yeah. Connect the dots. Um, something. <laughs> I'm getting uncomfortable. Well, maybe, maybe. Well, uh, what was what it? That's what it was. Way beyond throwing ice cubes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's just if you can use your your uh, they your throw imagination. themselves at you. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, they take off their clothes. Every, everything, yeah, it's like, and they everything, much say hello. everything you can imagine. Yeah. But sometimes, see what happens is you, you become fairly picky, which is the way you should be. Exactly. You know. So you had to turn I, them I down, was, I, these girls. Yeah. Yeah. You turned. No, <laughs> is it hot in wait, here? This is it hot in here or something? Yeah, oh, wait, yeah. you, were uh, you were talking about what, 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 Okay, you're, are you, you married? Years. Am I married? You're married? Maybe that's why he doesn't want to talk well, about Well, I am just, I might as well be married. Oh, I've you have a woman? The same lovely lady for oh. 16 years. Really? Oh, oh, that's great. Oh, maybe that's why he doesn't want to talk about groupies. <laughs> he doesn't want to no. get in trouble. No, <laughs> no, it's just, she was it's a just that everything, yeah, everything, yeah, everything you, you can imagine I can, is. Really? Exactly. <laughs> wow. But, yeah. but, you know, I long, long, long time. Right. And, you know, Get your yayas and yeah. Yeah. If, and then you, you, if you emerge unscathed, yes. you're lucky. <laughs> so you, you get tired of all that after a while. Right? Well, well, yeah. yeah exactly. You were looking for love. You found love. In all the wrong places. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Wait, so you've been with your lady for 16 years, and you've been with yours for... 16 years. Or, yeah, I, well, I knew him a year before that. We were engaged for 16 years, and we just got married a few months ago. Oh, wow. Oh, so this is, he made me wait. This is for both of you, then. How difficult is it? Like, what do you guys do to kind of keep things fresh and interesting when you're on the road and you're on the road and you don't see your significant other for a week or two weeks? or? That hasn't occurred in a long, in a long time for me. Okay. Because I, it's... I, I'm not. Face I'm time. not away. I'm not away for for seven, ten, twenty days right no. now. No, no. It's you know. I'll I'll go out, come back three days, maybe four mm. later. Me either. I won't. Yeah. Go, I don't even want to go. I don't even want to do a week long gig. I get depressed on the road. I just mm. I like. I love my husband. I'm just very cordial. I love my husband, but I like hanging out with him. I like you know. Uh, it, we, he's That's a good. great cook. Thank he's God. he's lovely. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't want to like be away and 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 also he works days and I work nights so in a way maybe that's a good thing you know because then when you see each other you're really happy to see each other and I don't know it's uh, actually today's my uh, four year anniversary really oh, happy anniversary yeah. thank you thank you my very wonderful nice. wife Noelia does she work not here? watching right now no she used to now she's a personal trainer oh my goodness so she's like an online fitness trainer. Online. Uh, yeah, it's like a new thing. She's actually doing really well. She like uh, finds them through Facebook. I don't know. She has like a whole course, that's and she's doing really perfect well. Perfect if you're a mother. That's yeah. a great job for a mother. Him great. Yeah. Doing, <laughs> wow. Doing pretty good. Trying to. Wow. So Mark, some other other bands that you've been in. Other bands. Yeah, John Entwistle. Uh, well, that I Tell was never in the John Entwistle band. However, you played I did, with him a lot. I did tour with him. Okay. Uh, I toured with uh, Brian Johnson okay. and Cliff Williams for ACDC. Cool. Uh, I recorded with John Bottom from Led Zeppelin. Amazing. Um, Did you ever meet all the guys in Led Zeppelin? Because no. I know you're in Hindenburg now. No. As a matter of fact, I I never I never met Paige. Never met Paige. No, never met him. Wow. Uh, I I talked at length with Robert Plant. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Cool. Like the hell of a nice guy. Did you meet him? At the at the studio that I was recording with uh, with Bonzo. Oh my God! That was in 1977. Wow! And I got called to do a, a session. That is Said amazing. show up at Sound Ideas. Go to this. Uh, you know, just go was in, that in America or the there. UK? Oh no, it was in the city. Oh, it was in New York. Okay. Yeah, and so I walk in. I see. I see Peter Grant, who is the manager of Led Zeppelin. Wow! 
who uh, he, he looks like uh, he looks like Rasputin. <laughs> but but That's anyway, scary. yeah, uh, it was yeah, it was a good manager. Crazy. Yeah, <laughs> and um, Felix Cavalier from the Young Rascals you know, is, uh, actually produced. Uh, yeah, uh, I know Felix. He's Steve Kahn, Will Lee from Tonight Show, um, John Bonham. Wow. You know, I can actually. I, I look back. I shared a case of Heineken with John Bonham. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Let alone play with him. That's pretty cool. That's really. <laughs> Gotta really love the rock star. Cool. Not not a six pack. You'd say yeah, the case. Hey. I love it. <laughs> Sean Bonham. <laughs> so you were playing in the in the seventies and. That's incredible. You started in the seventies. That's started when you started. Sixties. Playing in the sixties. You bet. Sixties. Oh. What were your clothes in the sixties and seventies on stage? What, what were you? Were my Can't be too far from the well, 60s and 70s, I I graduated in the 70s. Yeah. So in the 60s on stage, I didn't play much. Oh, okay, stage. okay. My first gig was uh, at my high school. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, okay. That this was back when they were actually having live bands in high schools. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and parochial schools. Right. I remember playing. I what remember playing. What was the name of your first band? Oh. Can you remember? The Wrath. The rat. Uh, oh, oh no, oh, no! It was the Knights of the Iguana. Oh my God, <laughs> that's a name that's right there, dude. Oh boy, oh boy! That's I can't believe you didn't make it. I know you played around town a lot. Yeah. You played at the Aft. The Knights I of the Iguana. I lived. I lived at the Aft. I have but, to tell but, you, but those, those bands never played the before. Night. Night of the Iguana. That's a play Knights. by. Oh, Knights. Spelled with a K. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah. Oh, it, Knights. It was, it was of the Iguana. Deep, you know? Wow. Did you wear like <laughs> Iguana yeah, well, armor? <laughs> no. no? I, I had all I could do to wear a guitar. Oh, okay. There you go. But uh, you know, you, you have uh, you have an amplifier, one amplifier that you put the bass, oh, the yeah. keyboards, the guitar. And the vocals. Oh, in. That's going to sound wonderful. Oh yeah, but that's, that's how far back. I mean, you asked yeah. me what my first band was. I, I got started early. Knights of the Iguana. Very cool. Yeah. So there was no Rod Stewart moment where you had a red spandex outfit? And... Oh, no, this was way before spandex. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. And did you just finish touring with the Mark Stein Project? Yes, I did. Who was I love from Mark the Stein. Van- Vanilla Fudge. Yes. Oh, wow. Tell us about that a little bit. Well, um... Mark is is just a wonderful guy and an incredibly talented keyboard player. And uh, I met him. Uh, someone had referred me, and Mark called me out of the blue. And we got to talking, and I came down, and we played, and we put a band together, a killer band. But the band didn't wind up getting... Uh, any tour dates only because the fudge were playing at the same time uh, and if somebody had money they're going to buy one ticket yeah, yeah. Right. and you're going to see mark you want to see him with the fudge yeah right that's what i think anyway but uh that anyway so we we put that uh, on the back burner for the time being okay so but we're, we're on sabbatical okay. we may very well so everything is a project it yeah. can always be restarted right yeah so I don't know if this was mentioned before, but besides MarkHit.com, he's also in Hindenburg. Hindenburg. Hindenburg, which is a Led Zeppelin cover band. Well, it's actually... Tribute to Led, actually, Led Zeppelin. Uh, we have to use the T word, otherwise Tribute people don't understand. Yeah. But we don't, you know, I don't wear the dragon pants. Hindenburg. And we, you know, <laughs> Zoso no. isn't up behind no. me or any of no, that of stuff. Wait, no I dragon inter- pants, I, I'm out. <laughs> I interpret Led Zeppelin because I love the music of Led Zeppelin. And it comes very naturally to me. I know. And and I have I can't and I have an uncanny training. ability to improvise within it oh, and play yeah. uh, in the spirit of the band things that the band never played. Yeah. Really? I hear you use your thumb a lot. Excuse me. Wow. <laughs> what just no, happened? Man. Whoa. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. You ever meet her ex uh, ex husband? <laughs> 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 Oh, double hit! <laughs> a twofer! Liz, we gotta go over your picks, by the way. Yeah, right. oh, really? Yeah. There's a show we're doing? I had no idea. Yeah. We're flying. <laughs> oh, right. oh, wait, what's right. the thumb thing? Why did you bring that up? Because he, he literally. No, well, actually, no, you see, I, I, don't, I don't play like this, no, which is considered plays. proper. Right. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy now, Hendrix, uh, a lot of the reason 
I don't play like that is because when you play rock and roll, you tend to wear your guitar considerably lower. Okay. It's not one of these. Yeah, yeah. You know? But as I lowered the guitar, my hand came around and I realized that having nice, big, long yeah. fingers. Your fingers Woo! are so long. Yep. <laughs> it helps to play Jeez, guitar. That yeah. thumb is massive. Yeah, well, He's thumb. got a big thumb. That's why he brought no, it yeah. No, but actually, I, I play, I chord thumb. with my thumb. If you look at, if you look at Matt, video. your hand. Not as big. No. That's why, big, that's why I'm though. the singer. No, if, if you. I can't do the thumb. pictures of. That's how Jimi Hendrix played. He had the most exactly. massive yeah. hands. And that Hendrix, lets you do a um, lot of stuff. Pete Townsend. All, all, all the old school hands. guys. All thumb. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you, yeah, you, 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 you would never. I got thick you wouldn't be able to wrap it around. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what, the, that's what you, you tell the girls, though. They're thick, though. No, they're thick. No, they're not short. They're very girthy So what's really funny is my guitar students. You know, if they start with this stuff, they yeah. said, well, that's all well and good, but it doesn't lend itself to rock and roll. you got to hold the guitar like a shillelagh. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, you don't I yeah. really notice uh, that. Self-taught. Very good. Wow, that's crazy. Very that is very cool. The shillelagh method. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the hit method. That uh, is uh, true, though. The Even hit method, though your like fingers it. are long, that thumb is, the thumb is gigantic, and yeah. it has a bi- that big... Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is taking a turn oh, I, here, I, I, huh? I can Look at that. basketball. I think I've got thumb envy. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only a digit, though. Only a digit. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not taking my thumbs out of her again. Your hands are just fine. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's what Chrissy tells me, too. <laughs> it's the motion of the ocean, or whatever they say. Yeah, it's that's... the fidget of a digit. <laughs> it's the fidget of the digit. <laughs> Okay, so my picks for the week picks, coming up yeah. this week. This weekend, there's a huge opening coming up in White Plains called the White Plains Comedy Club that everyone should <laughs> check out on September 20th, I believe you're opening, correct? September 19th is uh, Soft Open, Friends and Family, yes. so anybody here is welcome to come. It's Wait Friends Club, by the this way. This is a second club? This is a second club you're that I'm booking. You're opening a second club? The bottom of I'm, Z-Prime. I'm booking it, yes. You're I'm booking, booking it. it? Yes. Will you book me? Sure. Thank you. Mm-hmm. We'll have to do a show with you and your daughter, maybe. Oh, I love. I, she does so a lot of shows. So on the twentieth, there it yeah. is. Yeah. That'd be fun. You, you haven't Stormy been on the Daniels. same bill yet, huh? You haven't been on the same bill yet, have yeah, you? Yeah, we've been on the same. Oh, really? Bill. Oh yeah, we're doing one uh, next. We're doing a local, uh, a private one. Sh- I, I, I always. Do I bring you share her with the stage? Me. Yeah, we. No, she goes on before me. Right, but does uh, she come out at all during? Oh, do you, you do anything no. like that, like Tom Cotter and Carrie? No, we don't do that at the same time. Oh, no. That'll happen. Yeah, maybe. Let's see. We'll see. No, she's so, great. Stormy Daniels is on the 20th. Yeah. Uh, Daniels is on the 20th. Really? I think I did see that. Jeremy Piven on the 27th, 28th. Oh, my goodness. Judy Gold on October 4th. Judy Gold is hilarious. Brand and new club in Fred Rubino on October 11th. Well, Very good luck. Funny. Congratulations. Thank you. The other thing that I have coming up on the 20th, the weekend of, is the Greenwich Food and Wine Festival. It's in the Roger Sherman Park. Not necessarily Park. in that order. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, they have, uh, it's it's a big festival. It goes all weekend from Friday from 7 p.m. until Sunday, like 5 p.m. And they have Martha Stewart giving demos, Valerie Bertinelli, oh, wow. who's also a cook now. They, she's doing demos. Um, she must be off the Jeffrey Weight Watchers. Karen, who is on the Food Network, he's doing some demos. And then the band that they have on Saturday night is Little Big Town. They always have one big headliner. Like you can them. get tickets for that. It's on my website, outinwestchester.com. Um, oh, on the, the 28th. 20th, oh. On the 20th is Mary Hood, Rosie D'Angelo, and, yes. and Greg Jaquin, yep. also here yep. at Young, at. Yorktown York Grill, Grill with an E. With an e. <laughs> I wanted to put that out there. And there's yeah, it's also gonna be a October Fest at the Putnam County Golf Course. And they have the Amish Outlaws, which is on uh, September 20th as well from 6.30 to 10. The Amish Outlaws are hilarious. They're a great band. They do all your favorite covers. They dress like... Amish people, yeah. and they are outlawy. And if you haven't seen that band, I definitely recommend it. It's a really good time. You get food. There's a big buffet, and I think the band goes on at about 7:30, 8 o'clock. We played there in June. Exactly. And I love With that yeah. yeah. I actually heard about you because I did the comedy, and you guys had done it right before I did it. They did a comedy show like yeah. right after, and they said you guys. Were and great. we were we were blessed with a they beautiful evening. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, it's just, and we played outside. 
And it's nice because outside is a nice big room. Yes. Yeah. And you can turn and it's up. Beautiful. Yeah, that's <laughs> the best. Yeah, the and nobody, the nobody sound, will The sound is always body. good outside too. And then I have one more thing that I have to yeah. give a plug for on Sunday, um, uh, September twenty first uh, or the twenty second is my friend Frankie Sands. He's 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 a Sinatra. Uh, he sings Sinatra. He's playing at the White Plains Performing Arts Center. Um, check out my website. He's amazing if you love Sinatra. He sounds exactly like him. He's so entertaining. And that's again at the White Plains Performing Arts Center on Sunday, September twenty second. Uh, there is one. one thing I, I did want to bring up. Okay. Um, I am uh, I'm playing a lot of other people's material okay. for years and years and years. And uh, I'm proud to say that uh, I'll be releasing my EP this year. Finally! Uh, wow. Yes. Uh, and, uh, yes. What's the name of it? Congratulations. Uh, well, Mark hits a good start. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Thumbs. I thumbs. think you should call it thumbs. thumbs. I'll, I'll call it. <laughs> the hit, thumbs have it. Hit, hypnotized. Yeah. Hey. I don't know. I don't know. Full of the puns. <laughs> to ride your wake here a little bit too. I'm. I'm I will be releasing an EP at the oh, end, by the you. end of the month as well. Oh wow. Yeah, so look out for that. You gotta get your own, your own stuff out in the world eventually. It's the best. You know? Otherwise, it's not worth it. Yeah. Wow. Except with me, it's it's. I feel like I like I've been ten months pregnant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I heard you were putting out your own uh, album yeah. this year. Yeah. Overnight success. Just been a long night. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Very cool. It's fantastic. It really well, is great. Thanks. And you played with Richie Scarlet. Yeah. 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 On two albums. Um. I he asked me to come in and uh, play. Play guitars on a couple of tunes. Okay. I don't know whether both the songs were on the same album. I think it was a couple of albums. Yeah. Okay. Richie and I have known each other forever. Right, exactly. Great people. He's also another local musician. Great people. That has played with Ace Freely and, and a lot of well known talent that has come through Westchester County. Oh, yeah. County. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got. He's quite, Can quite, I ask you one question? Sure. If there's a highlight of your career, what would it be? Highlight of my career? Mm -hmm. Well, I'd have to say walking into that studio and, uh, you know, 23 years old and my, my knees got weak when I saw who was in that studio. You know, I see Robert Plant, I see John Bonham, I see, I see everybody that's in there. Yeah. And I didn't... Did you get it, nervous? Were you scared? Uh, well, kind of. Okay. Kind of, but I knew, I knew that... Uh, you know, all I got to do is just act naturally. Yeah, you're there just for do play. what I do. You're there for a reason, right? I, I was hired. I was hired to be the rock guitar player on the game. Wow. Uh, on this session. So you uh, were that confident with all oh, those oh, yeah. big guys? You were like, I can do this. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, it's because I, it's what I do. Yeah. I'm never that confident. Are you <laughs> ever? Did you, did you study all the Led Zeppelin stuff growing up? Like, what was your one band that you? Really would play over and over and over again because you play Zeppelin. I well, have to say it's like Jimmy Page. Well, You're that's so good. now it's funny that you say that because a lot of what I play isn't Jimmy, but it's in the spirit of the band. Yeah. It sounds like something Page would play. Okay. You know what I mean? But it's your not, own. not You're not, to, not, not to note for note, right? Not to mention that I was a very ignorant child. I didn't know there was such a thing as double tracking. So where Jimmy would put six or seven guitars down on a song, right. I thought he's playing it all at the same time. Oh so my I, God. so I learned it that way. Oh my God! <laughs> Are you kidding me? And that and that yeah. made me uh, That's what makes Mark considerably Mark better guitar player. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> Incredible. So it's rhythm and lead guitar. At the same yeah, time. I, I play you know like dual guitar parts and things like that. Cool. Oh Can we just God. mention the other members of your band, uh, Hindenburg? Sure. You want to throw sure, Mike, Mike, Mike McEwen is a yeah. wonderful singer. Great singer. Yeah. Friend of mine. And uh, Lenny Lee. Bass player. Bass player. Bass vocals. Uh, yes, and keyboard. Mm -hmm. Extraordinary. Yes. And Steve Budgie Werner, who has been in bands damn near as long as me. Not quite, but Probably damn near. the best drummer yes. in Westchester. Yes, and he also plays in a band by the name of Snap Ahead, yep. which is local. Snap Ahead? Uh, but he, Snap Ahead. He, Love the names of these bands. He, Snap he, he mans the drums in, in Hindenburg, and he does he does a spot with, on bottom. Who, he's played with a few no, like notable people Oh, as sure. Well. He toured the world with a band by the name of Black Lace. Okay. Yeah, he's incredible. 
What's the bungee in, in the middle? It's of not it? bungee. It's budgie. 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 budgee. What's the budgie? Uh, bu- bungee stretch. <laughs> <laughs> he stays in one place. What is a budgee? Is that a? Well, is it's, that, uh, is it's, a, a it's a type a of parrot, and somehow, some way, <laughs> he got the nickname. Oh, okay. Don't ask me how. I see. However, I'm sure he'll be on the program. Oh, you can ask him. Exactly. <laughs> I love him. He's great. He is. And, and you also play down in. Um, Brewskis every other Thursday. Yeah, with that's Tim with Tim Curtin. Curtin. Tim Curtin, right? That's, uh, that's in the Bronx. Yeah. Every other Thursday we Great get here, place. and we're all professional musicians. Yep. We all get on stage, and we all just pull rabbits out of hats and hope they live. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Are you just um, riffing? You mean? Are you just Jamming. when you say you just pulling rabbits out of hats? Oh, you... just songs. Yeah. You know, we all mutually know songs. Sometimes Timmy will start a song that I've never played before, but I've heard it so long so many times that I've assimilated it. Wow. So I just play it and that's, not that's know it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's really great. But by the time uh, guys like what we do, right. we hear a verse and a chorus, and once that goes by, then you got the rest of the song. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Genius musician right yeah. here. Yeah. Genius. Wow. What? I think he's been reincarnated. I, I said he was like Mozart. Been <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. If I was reincarnated as Mozart, I'd probably be dead by now but, uh, <laughs> and, and I'm not so <laughs> how about you highlight of your career oh my god what was the highlight I mean uh, uh, I guess when I got it I mean when I got that show with Jon Stewart because I never thought it. you know how confident you are that's how unconfident I mean when they said are you going up for this and I remember thinking well I'm never gonna get this you know it's a TV show and it was like it was on a Comedy Central and like oh my god and we got it so I guess that yeah, was yeah but pretty, you know what you went in that there thinking a, that that was yeah. a type of nonchalance and that probably helped you yeah, I know. Sometimes when you're rather too, than angst, right? Because yeah. you think yeah. it's not going to happen anyway, so I right. just had fun. Yeah. Right. yeah, that's what you have to do. But that was the first thing I ever got, and I get think that's you know you're young and you think you, oh my god I got the world ahead. The world is my oyster, <laughs> and then you realize oh maybe it's not a few years later. But but at that time it was like very cool. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, Mark Hit, thank you so much right, for joining thank us. You. MarkHint.com, October 4th at the Chance of Poughkeepsie. Hindenburg. And I had a, and I had had a great time with Hindenburg. you. Hindenburg.net. And those thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically. Yeah. I'll be dreaming dare, dare about I your thumbs. thumb's up. Oh, man. <laughs> thumbs you are full of them over here. Look at you. Uh, Patty Rossboro. Check <laughs> her out on follow her on Facebook and Instagram at Patty Rossboro. This is really fun, I have to say. Thank I had you. a great time. Cool. And I love that you were the guest on the thing. I love this restaurant. And you're a doll and you're a doll. And it yeah. was great. The planet's yeah. alive. It is. Yeah, it was <laughs> fun. <laughs> Please check her out September 24th at Caroline's, October 3rd and 5th at Dangerfields, and probably October or November at some point either at Lucy's Laugh Lounge or the White Plains Comedy Club with a daughter. With Molly we'll Kornfeld. That going. Molly Kornfeld, thank you. Check out my daughter's web series. I wish I could remember the name of it. God damn it. Look up Molly Kornfeld with a K. <laughs> with a K Molly right? Kornfeld with a K. It begins with a D. What is her? I can never remember it, and she gets mad at me. Uh, Hindenburg.net. Don't forget that. Hindenburg.net. Hindenburg.net. Uh, net, uh, and by the way, October fourth, which is a Friday at the Chance Theater in Poughkeepsie. Hindenburg. Yep. For a number of reasons, we didn't spell it the way the blimp oh. Hindenburg. It's, oh. So it's not a B U R G. It's B E R G. And it always why? messes me up. Why so is it's that? The Jewish <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's why. It's Jewish. It's a Jewish one. But dimensions in the. Um, <laughs> Special thank you to Matt Crosser for sitting in on with us. Thank October you so 3rd. much for having us. Hey, my pleasure, guys. Thanks thank for coming out. Your place out. is fantastic. Thank you yes. so much. October 3rd, he'll be at Love First Season in Yorktown. <laughs> <laughs> November 1st, he'll be at Up Lounge in Nyack. And, of course, Matt Crosser is the owner of the Yorktown Grill, 347 yep. Downing Drive, Yorktown Heights, New York. Please come out and check them out. Unbelievable shrimp taco, unbelievable wings, great family atmosphere. Uh, and thank you so much for hosting us. Hey, thank you so much, thank guys. You. This thank has been guys. a really good thank time. You. It's been a lot of fun. Pleasure. Thanks, Absolutely guys. A pleasure. Have pleasure. a good night. Bye-bye. Thank you. Uh, All right. That was a good time. It was really fun.